wolves. They are the ancestors of man's best friend. Yet in much of our traditional lore, the wolf is an evil creature. Three scientists are trying to understand the true nature of wolves. They are the heads of Austria's Wolf Science Center. Friederike Range, behavior scientist from Germany. It's a daily challenge. Each day something unexpected happens. Sofia Virani, wolf expert from Hungary. They, they just pay attention when they don't pay attention at all, and then they do what they are not supposed to do. Wolves. And Kurt Kotreschow. Zack, zack, zack. Head of the Konrad Lawrence Research Center. Working with wolves, raising them, living with them is fascinating. The scientists are hand raising a litter of wolves. Professional trainers keep the animals occupied. Yeah. Bea Beleni. The wolf whisperer. When they are stressed or something catches their interest, they won't sit, they just walk away. They can do that. They're wolves. The Wolf Science Center tries to define the differences between wolves and dogs. They are individual characters and they'll never do what they don't want to do. Here, animals also work with computers. Aragon, thank you. Wolves, how intelligent are they? For their long-term study, Bea, Helena and Barbara, the filmmaker, bring four pups from America. The scientists and the wolves become partners and sleep in the same bed. For a year and a half, a litter of wolves and a dozen scientists have shared the gardens of Ernstbrunn Castle in Austria. Aragorn, Shima, Kaspar and Tataya are the first participants of a large-scale research project. They live together with trusted humans, but they still remain wolves. Tame wolves? Wolves you can actually touch? What a chance to get to know these animals and their human partners. Our camera team is permitted to share in the wolves' daily routine and to watch work of the Wolf Science Center team, led by Friederike Range, Sofia Verani, and Kurt Kotreschall. But before the project can really take off at Ernstbrunn, Austria, some of the team have to travel to Montana, where the birth of a new litter is expected. Near the Canadian border is a wildlife farm where timber wolves have been bred for many years. The research team opted for timber wolves. They're emotionally more balanced than European wolves. Bea Beleni and Helena Merslinger have been here for a few days. Look at that! Our biggest one. How old is she? 18 days. She looks well fed. For 10 days, Tatonga has been bottle fed, which will make her a tame wolf. Wolves build a closer relationship to their pack than to their parents. Tatanga is the eldest. Helena introduces the youngest. These are Dakota's children. We got them yesterday and are feeding them for the first time now. 
Das ist das Männchen. That's the male. Das ist das Männchen. Das ist das Weibchen. And this is the female. Today they are nine days old. Geronimo and Yukon cannot yet see or hear. This shields them against stressful impressions. It's the first time that they are bottle fat. As you can see, it's not that simple. They're not sure whether they should accept the bottle. I know, you're hungry. You should be. You have to be very careful that they won't inhale any milk. This can happen if the bottle slips beside the tongue, and it can lead to pneumonia, which cannot be cured at that age. Correct feeding is a real skill and should only be done by experts. The fourth pup is Nanook. His mother never accepted him, so he was bottle-fed from the first day. Bea and Helena are already good at that, and the little wolves are quickly getting used to the new foster mothers. Now that all four pups are eating without problems and have all the required veterinary and official documents, the team can plan the trip to New York. No U.S. airline will take wolf pups on board, so they have to go by car. From Montana to New York, it's more than 4,000 kilometers. In a few months, the four pups will form a pack, together with Kaspar and the others. But how did it all begin? A few years ago, Friederike Range dropped in at Grünau and wanted to start a wolf project, but there was no financing available. So she went to Vienna and suddenly Sofia Virani from Budapest appeared in Vienna. So we all met there and said, now or never. We have the right team, three scientists mad enough to start a wolf project from nothing. We just did it, beginning at the Grünau Research Center, then moving to Ernst Brunn Castle. An hour's drive northeast of Vienna, the Wolf Science Center has found a home. Prince Heinrich XIV of Reuss is a generous host, doing whatever he can to make life pleasant for the animals and the scientists. For Kurt Kotrischal, director of the Konrad Lorenz Research Station in Grunau and professor at Vienna University, the timber wolves Kaspar, Aragorn, Shima and Taya are the first wolves he gets to know personally. Not with me. Kurt's understanding of wolves is changing, especially in respect to two traditional notions. Dominance and social rank, these things have strongly governed our thinking. But when you are actually working with wolves, you learn that although these things exist, they are far less important than people generally think. Wolves are highly social animals and very complex in their communication. The opportunity to live with them holds a great fascination. I can't deny that it's emotionally grabbing. Sofia Virani is equally fascinated, especially by the animal's willingness to cooperate. The cognition biologist from Hungary has already gathered experience in raising wolves back in her home country. From my birth on, as much as I can remember, I have a trust in the animals. It was for a while, I hope it's not anymore, probably quite naive, too much trust. Um, I guess I arrived with this trust there too and I didn't expect anything dangerous or something and their, their behavior kind of justified it in a way, so they seem to be rather careful and scary. Um, now I know much more about this, so I would have completely different expectations now going into the same situation, I think. Her colleague from Vienna University, Friederike Range, has completed many studies about cooperation among animals. 
She wants to find out how much in the collaboration of individuals is intentional. Do monkeys, ravens, dogs, or wolves choose their partners with intent? The four timber wolves are the first ones Friederike has raised by hand. It's fun to build a relationship with the animals, although they are wolves and will remain more aloof than dogs. Each is a unique character. If they don't want to do something, they won't do it. A dog can always be convinced to do something, as a favor for a human. In contrast, a wolf will say, sorry, not today. I don't care what you have in your pocket. Today, I don't want to. During every shooting day, the cameraman can see how sensitive the animals are and how they react to the camera. Usually, it simply takes time for them to lose their cautiousness. Okay, now let's take a look at what he's doing here. Now I make a big noise, and you leave the compound running with the camera. What do you think they've learned? <laughs> How do I make a camera crew run? This interaction with wolves requires lots of training and only positive reinforcement. It serves but one purpose, to make them cooperate with us. I actually want Aragorn. Will you come out, please? The animals literally line up for the training units. Yes, well done. Good boy. In order not to distract Aragorn and to make Bea's work easier, the sound engineer and the director withdraw to the gallery. Aragorn can see where they're going. The cameraman can stay close, but should not move. Here comes the next day. Okay. By his tail, you can tell that he's a little nervous, even now. We have to give him time. The work, the simple exercises, will hold his attention. You can also see that we always use little treats. That's important. Without treats, you cannot work with them. We have trained them to keep eye contact with us. Aragorn is the only left-hander among the wolves in Ernstbrunn. He waves with his left paw. Of course, they can also learn tricks. That's easy, and it keeps them occupied and focused. Here you can see how shy wolves are. The stranger and the camera's huge eye frighten him. If Bea weren't here, the wolf would probably hide in the most remote corner, even if the cameraman had food with him. You can see that he's hiding behind me. I make him feel safe. We would have never said that about wolves, that a human could make them feel safe. The same action is now demonstrated with Kendra, a trained dog. This is the difference. She does not walk away. She does not explore. She looked around. That's all she needed. And now she's sitting in front of me and has eye contact. That's a big difference. I don't have to say, sit. Nor do I have to give her a treat to get her to work. Kendra is fully focused on Bea. 
the camera team can move around freely. She's not distracted. With Bea's help, Kendra even completed her training as a therapy dog. It's unlikely that a wolf could ever be that perfect. Things like teeth bearing are much easier with dogs. With her too. If I do this with a wolf without giving him a treat, he will chew my hand off. Well, not that severe, but he'll let me know he doesn't like it. With a dog, that's no problem, and it shouldn't be. Dogs can concentrate for a much longer time. They naturally guard humans. Wolves don't do that. They have to learn it by realizing that it's the easiest way to get food. Dogs are attentive to humans. And, uh, yeah. What we think and do is important to them. That's not necessarily the case with wolves. They can look after themselves. Kendra, Guinness, Bolita, Todor, and Oscar are Bea's, Friederike's, Kurt's, and Sophie's private pets. They've been part of the team from the very start and helped with raising the pups. The wolves still treat them with respect. The domestic dogs make the wolves feel safe in unfamiliar situations during strolls in the countryside. In some test situations, the dogs sometimes show the wolves what to do. Aragon shows how wolves solve their own problems. He wants something, and he wants it right now. Mm -hmm. What shall we take away from him? Uh, oops, I should have thought of that. <laughs> My mistake. Um, There's no one outside right now. I would need a piece of meat, but we haven't got any. Aragon had it first, now Kasper has it and doesn't want to give it up. The camera base was just a nice yep. toy, but now it has become a status symbol. You could take it away from a dog anytime, not from a wolf. Kurt gets a growl and backs off. First, the mood has to change, otherwise we haven't got a chance. It's not just the mood that keeps Kurt from getting back the equipment. The researchers avoid such confrontations altogether in order not to breed distrust. We staged that so you wouldn't think that wolves are just German shepherds. The team understood the principle. Aragorn will surely keep reminding them of it. Hey, 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 hey. Kaspar, sit. Good. The only resort in such a situation is to act as if nothing had happened and continue with the routine. Distraction is the key. Come here. Taya. Okay, now she will get her medication to keep her healthy. And afterwards a little treat. Ouch, don't bite my finger off. Taya was born in a zoo in southern Austria like the three others. She suffers from epilepsy. That's why she has to get medication every day. Taya is also completely blind, yet she has remarkable orientation. She's socially very amiable. 
You can actually get her in contact with children, that's no problem. Probably because of her blindness. She does not get these visual triggers. She is less shy than the others. Hey, it's me. Hello. Hello. Taya's bad health is a result of inbreeding. She's Kaspar's sister. Shima and Argorn are also siblings. These animals should not mate and breed, but for a well-founded scientific study, more than three healthy wolves are needed. In order to exclude any blood relationship, Shofi, Friederike, and Kurt decide to get four wolves from the United States. That's the reason for their adventurous journey across the continent from the home of timber wolves along Montana's Canadian border to New York. Before the journey starts, cameraman Ferdinand Sibulka fits the vehicle with microphones and lights. Then everything needs to be packed. Four people, their personal belongings, equipment, lots of baby food, and four little wolves. It will be tight. We did it. It's May 11th. On the 17th, they have to be in New York. It's a 4,500 kilometer drive, and there's no time for sightseeing. Every two hours, the pups demand their bottles. Bea and Helena feed them on the go. The car is also the toilet. Bea and Helena do what they can to make the pups feel comfortable. Stopping for a pee is a good excuse to get some fresh air. Stretching legs, a little cuddling, and it's back on the road. The foster mothers decide to drive through the night. They have to keep feeding the pups anyway. After every meal, the little ones need a belly massage so that their digestion works well. That's very important. It's the most important thing. The little wolves seem to have settled in. But 36 hours on the road are enough for a start. Bea and Helena turn the next motel room into a wolf pup nursery. Tatanga, as the eldest, gets the bathroom. If we take 20 milliliters of powder and filling up to 60, you think that will be enough? <laughs> More than enough. <laughs> Are your eyes open yet? No. While the travelers are hoping for a wink of sleep, back in Vienna, they're trying to get as many things done as possible. Friederike knows that in a few days, the pups will dictate her daily schedule. Friederike gets Kaspar in the testing room. She wants to find out whether wolves are capable of mathematical serial conclusions using a standard task which the wolves learn to solve on a touch screen. Kaspar, go. Kaspar, come here. Ooh, Kaspar. No need to be afraid. The camera looks suspicious, but then Kaspar begins to work. The wolf learns the sequence of seven objects and that A is bigger than B, B bigger than C, etc. If he clicks the correct symbol, always the bigger one, he gets a treat. Let's see that again.
If he picks the wrong symbol, the screen turns red and he gets nothing. The question is whether the wolf understands that A is bigger than B and B bigger than D. The wolf is working independently without human interference. Kaspar has been working on this sequence for 14 months. It already went so well. The actual testing will not begin until he can get 80% of the trials right. Dogs take an average of three years to get to that point. Friederike doesn't know yet how long the wolves will take. Super, 28. What's fascinating is that he has worked, although both doors are open. He could have left if he'd wanted to. He is here to work. No one is forcing him. Yesterday the wolves were fed a deer. He is not starving. I've got this bowl here, and it would be easy for him to come over and take food from the bowl, but he prefers to work for it. On the one hand, he has learned that this is mine, on the other, he really enjoys working. The touch screen work begins when the wolves are four months old. So far, none of the wolves has reached the testing phase. A sequence of seven elements is very, very difficult, even for a human child. Children can only do that when they are four or five years old, or even older. Many studies use only five elements. A series of seven is much harder. With five, I have fewer testing opportunities. Seven gives me a whole lot more. But had I known how long the animals take to master seven, I would have gone for five. <laughs> Meanwhile in America, Helena and Bea are not worried about intelligence testing. They are taking careful notes about feeding times and amounts. They've hardly slept for days, so the wolf mothers use every resting phase of the little ones. Barbara tries to keep Tatanga from tearing up the car. Push hard. Maybe not the best combination, lunch with a pooping wolf. This one hasn't eaten for a whole day. The miserable weather and the condition of the pups force the team to make a stop. This one looks really nice. In this motel too, the room is converted within minutes. Together with their foster moms, the pups immediately relax and fall asleep. During the small hours, the pups have had a hearty meal. Time to move on. They try to make miles, but then run into a blizzard. They slow to a crawl on the highway. Three pups half refusing to eat in the car, one fit as a fiddle, wanting to horse around. The weather report making it seem unwise to continue the journey. What should they do? You can't see your hand in front of your eyes, let alone a motel sign. Helena uses the amenities of the rest stop. Yukon and Geronimo are knackered, and Nanook's got diarrhea. Forget the plane, the animal's health has priority. They have to wait for the storm to pass. Then they have to get to an associated wolf park in Indiana as fast as possible.
Helena phones the vet at the Wolf Park. He was 37, 4 degrees in the morning. We hope that it's just the excitement why he's not eating. The vet reassures Helena. 400 kilometers to go before the stopover in Indiana, and he'll be waiting for them. In Ernst Brun, things are running smoothly. Shima, Aragorn, Kaspar, and Taya are in good shape. The vet's visit today is just routine. Shima is to get familiar with such situations. Shima. Shofi and Friederike entice her with treats. Shima, come here. Shima, come here. I've got something better than Sophie. Come on, touch. I love you. <laughs> well, you can work with it, but just give her that. When Friederike says touch, Shima should touch the vet's hand. Mm -hmm. Dr. Michiel Antolini has supported the project from the very start. Okay. His family accepted the patronage for two of the wolves. Uh, we would simply place Shima in front of you. Yeah, super easy. Come on, here, come. Ganz vorsichtig von vorne anfassen. Yeah, super. Shima should stand in front of the vet by her own choice. She's given time to build trust. Das geht so nicht, Mäuschen. The situation seems a bit suspicious. Although she keeps returning to Friederike, she won't stand still yet. Now it works. Dr. Antolini is surprised that Shima's heart rate is so low. When a dog acts that nervous, its heartbeat would be around 120. But Shima's pulse is clearly much lower. Shima appears more nervous than she really is. Shima is to get an injection. The wolves undergo the same vaccination program as dogs. Usually, the animals don't even notice the prick. That was one of the most fascinating things now. The trust Shima has shown, the way she allowed Sophie to hold her, while a stranger would touch her. I never expected that this would work. Back in the US, the Wolf Park of Indiana lies on the outskirts of a sleepy town, Battleground. Bea is happy to know that here the pups will be well taken care of. The Wolf Park team has already prepared everything. A special room is ready for the pups. A few weeks ago, Helena and Bea worked as interns here. They know the customs of the place. The Wolf Park was established in 1972 by Dr. Erich Klinghammer. Together with his wife, he raised many wolves and is considered one of the leading experts. Eric takes a look at the puppies and immediately has a suspicion why they're so exhausted. His wife confirms it on the phone. Yeah, okay. All done. Bye bye. My wife, the puppy mother, says make sure you don't overheat. The puppy room is climatized. Here the little ones can recover. In the wolf park, wolves and bison live side by side, like in the old days of the Wild West. 
when 50 million bison roamed the prairie. Today, a few thousand are left in captivity. The timber wolves in the USA share a similar fate. Larger populations only remain in Alaska and Minnesota. Can you be tall? The Austrian Wolf Science Center and the Indiana Wolf Park practice a close collaboration. The Austrians have their own scientific program, but Schofi and Friederike have performed some tests here. Yes. Do, 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 do. Do. The wolves here are surprisingly open towards strangers. Barbara's pair of trousers with the wolf footprint, she'll never wash it again, that's for sure. While she's enjoying her first cuddle with a wolf, the little ones are recovering quickly. What a reassuring sound. Nanook had an infection and got an antibiotic. How is he now? Better already. They're doing well, and they're drinking a lot now. The peace and quiet here really helps. Fine. It looks good. When you live with wolves, feeding activity and scat consistency are central issues. As long as these two things are normal, the animals are healthy and the foster moms happy. They will give the little ones another night of rest. Then it's time to say goodbye to Helena, <laughs> who will fly home directly from here. <laughs> Bea and the film crew will continue the journey with the pups. Elena returns into spring. The wolves and the researchers are put up in the castle's so-called suspended gardens. Ancient fruit trees in the compound bear witness of past glories. Court usually collects the wolf scat to prevent people from stepping into it, but sometimes for scientific purposes. The concentration of stress hormones in the scat provides information about the animal's condition. Not those produced by momentary excitement, but the long-term levels. The stress hormone level depends on the situation of an individual in the pack. In an unstable situation, the level is high. Generally, high-ranking individuals have a higher level. Kaspar, for example, the boss here. Why? Because he is always busy confirming his status. That's permanent stress. Would such an analysis produce similar results with humans? After the morning routine, the research work begins. String pulling, that's the task. Shima, what's that supposed to be? She's going to lie down in a minute, somewhere in the shade. Shima's not playing today. Let's get Casper if she doesn't want to. But Aragorn is first. He wants to join in. Aragorn, come here. He has to look around first. Let's wait until he's ready. This experiment is about whether wolves will understand the connection between pulling the rope and getting food. He's got the choice between two ropes, one of them connected to food. 
He's only got one try. Once he's grabbed the rope, that's it. Aragorn tries to move the rope with his paw, his left paw. Other wolves also do this with their mouths. What's also fascinating is that I can help him to get to the food. There's no aggression. Even when I take the rope with the food, he doesn't gnaw at me. He knows he'll get the food. He trusts me. In Wolf Park it was different. They always had to distract him with food before touching the rope. The wolves wouldn't have allowed them to take it. Aragorn can go back to the others. The four American pups are doing fine again. If there are no more problems, they can make it to New York in time for the plane. 1,200 kilometers still lie ahead. That should be possible in 16 hours. Road signs galore and no sunrise in sight. All of them are completely exhausted. And Bea can't rest for too long either. Hey, hey he's eating. Yes, Super. Hard to believe. New York. They've made it. In the departure hall, the unlikely passengers are greeted with great enthusiasm. Having wolf pups with you when going through the JFK security gate is an insider tip. No standing in line. No questions asked. No filming either, though. There's even time for shopping. At last, Tatonga gets a cuddly toy. The other passengers don't have a problem with the improvised puppy playground. She so needed that. There's no doubt about it, on board the wolves are stars, and they present the stewardesses with a new challenge, preparing bottles with warm milk for wolf pups. There's never a boring moment with Tatanga. Lots of paperwork was necessary before the Wolf Science Center got permission to import four wolves from the U.S. in the cabin of a passenger flight. But for the little ones, this was the only option. They need regular feeding. Putting them in the hold would have been too risky. The eight hours feel shorter than expected. But the pups aren't in Ernsbrunn yet. On the runway, Friederike can't wait to see her new pups. But first they have to see the official vet. Plus, the press is waiting. 
You smell like a real wolf. <laughs> Proudly, Bea Bellini and Kurt Kotlishal present the newcomers. Then, for the last time, Tatonga, Nanook, Yukon, and Geronimo have to get in the car. In Ernst Brunn, Bea goes directly to meet her old friends. Hey, Grotha. Hello. Aragorn, Kaspar, and Shima recognize her immediately. A reunion like that is enough to bring tears to one's eyes. One wolf is missing in the pack, Taya. For days, the blind wolf has been suffering. She's lying down in a separate compound. While Bea is looking after the sick wolf, Friederike and Shofi are enjoying the first hours with the new pups. They'll spend the next few nights with them. These four wolf pups will be an important pillar in the big project of the Wolf Science Center. In collaboration with Vienna University, the true nature of the wolf will be explored. Sofia Virani and Friederike Ranga immediately step into their new roles as foster mothers and look after the pups. Kurt Kotrischal is excited. We can see already that we will be able to do things here that could not be done anywhere else. Working together with wolves in experimental situations, asking them, how do you organize your cooperation? How do you think? These are fascinating questions we hope to get answered during the next 15 years. Hungry. That's again such a division of sexual roles. The man <laughs> gives the meat, the women give the milk. <laughs> Isn't it true? <laughs> Nanook receives his first meat ration. Oh, 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 that's my finger. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> From Federica. <laughs> The filmmaker's boys, this is a big exception, are also allowed to meet the wolves. Today we are really hungry. Would you like to finish that? Not really good, I tell you, this pup food. I didn't know. That's not your bottle. In the beginning I always tasted the milk. Every time it tasted really bad. <laughs> Bea and Helena and the film crew have delivered the wolves to Ernst Brunn. For Friederike, Sophie and Kurt, this is the beginning of a new phase. The little ones have to be socialized and build a relationship with their new keepers as well. No vegetarian Cuddling and playing are central at the moment, but soon there will be serious tasks. What are a wolf's mental abilities? How do they think? And what are dogs capable of? In the next episode, another set of puppies will arrive. The comparison. Group. What are the real differences between wolves and dogs? For now, however, Bea can go to bed. Finally.